All right, we're going to jump into this chapter on alkanes by first starting off with the nomenclature of alkanes. Uh, and first off, an alkane is a hydrocarbon, so only hydrogen and carbon typically, uh, that contains no carbon-carbon double bonds or no carbon-carbon triple bonds, all carbon-carbon single bonds. That's our alkanes here. Uh, and in this case, when we name alkanes, we always name them with an A-N-E suffix. So here, methane, ethane, propane, so on and so forth. So, and then the prefix we put out front depends on the number of carbons in the chain. And in this case, you've got 12 pre prefixes memorized. I've got those diagrammed off to the right here. So, meth, eth, pro, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, dec, undec, dodec. So, and if we look at these, uh, with five being pent, so students don't usually struggle with that one since a pentagon has five sides, hex, since a hexagon has six sides, or oct, since an octagon has eight sides, or dec, since a decade has ten years. Students don't struggle with those. So, and even non, since it kind of sounds like nine, students don't struggle with. And then undec and dodec, some classes don't even learn these, but it's like kind of like decade plus one and decade plus two, so ten plus one, ten plus two, eleven and twelve carbons respectively. Students don't struggle there, but the remaining ones here, so hept meaning seven, that's probably new for you. Um, so students struggle with that one. That one you just got to kind of commit, kind of commit to memory here. Uh, but the first four, so meth, eth, prop, but. So there's four in a row. They're probably fairly new to you. Uh, and students often, especially early in the semester, struggle with these four. So I'm going to give you a little mnemonic here. So and that mnemonic is me eat peanut butter for meth, eth, prop, but. So me eat peanut butter. I know it's silly. I know it's stupid. And that means you're more likely to remember it. Um, but get those four down. In fact, get all 12 down, obviously, because uh, you're going to need to know them. So our first 12 alkanes, therefore, are methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane, undecane, dodecane. Try saying that very quickly. Uh, but you do need to get those 12 down, and you do need to get them down in short order here, because uh, those are just the base names. The rules are going to make this a little more complex in a hurry. Well, let's take a look. So in naming alkanes, rule number one says identify the longest continuous carbon chain. We call this the parent chain. So if we look at this first example here, again, every vertex is a corner here in these line angle structures. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we branch here. And so to be continuous, I either go up to the right or I go down. In this case, they're exactly equivalent. They're both methyl groups, uh, one carbon chains from here on out. And whether I go one to the right or one down, it's the same. So you can just get to pick your parent chain. Then I'm going to just choose down because most people would have chose to the right. I'm going to choose down just for the fun of it. Uh, but in this case, this is just a two, four, six, seven carbon chain. So and we'll find out that that has the root name heptane, or at least we found that out in the last slide. Uh, let's take a look at the one below it here. So in this case, I'm going to start from the right here because that's a little easier to see. So one, two, three, four, five. So when we get to this branch point, I can go two longer down here, but I can also go two longer up here. And that's where this little special clause on rule number one says, if there are multiple ways to come up with the longest chain, then choose the one with the most substituents as the parent chain. Now, in this case, if I just continue off to the left here, I would only have this one substituent here coming off the main chain. So, but if I go up, so to this carbon, and then either off to the right or off to the left, then they're totally equivalent, so it doesn't really matter which one. And in this case, I'm going to end up with two substituents, and that's what rule number one says is the superior way. So I like to think that we're trying to make the longest word in the world, and we'll do that if we have more substituents to name, as we'll see shortly. Uh, so let's move on to this one on the right here. So and this one's going to be a little bit complicated here, um, but if we start with a branch points, it's obviously uh, convenient to systematically kind of approach this by starting at these branch points. And from this branch points, I can go down to the left or I can go up. And as we just learned on exactly the last example, if we go up here, and whether I go left or right at that point doesn't matter, but if we go up here, I'd end up with two substituents. So that's definitely the way to go, more substituents instead of just one. And as we go off to the right, so I get to this branch point. If I go down, it's only two more carbons. If I go to the right, it's also only two more carbons. But I can see if I go to the right, and whether I go uh, any one of these three carbons, they're all equivalent. So I'll just choose that one. I could have chosen any of the three to be part of the parent chain here. But I'll get more substituents this way. I'll get a total of three. Had we gone down, we would have just had one giant substituent off to the right here. So keep in mind, we've got one, two, three, four, five substituents. So keep in mind, had we done this the wrong way, so maybe we had just gone carbon, 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 carbon. And we just thought, oh, you go right across the middle or something like that. So you can see here, we've only got one, two, three, 
four substituents, and this is not the only wrong way. So we definitely had multiple ways to get the longest chain here. Uh, but this one only had four, and again, the correct one above it has five substituents, and that's a superior way. More substituents gets us a longer name, and apparently I think that's the goal. Uh, if we look then, we got a parent chain of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. That's going to be an octane as our parent chain on this one. Let's go to the next rule. So now let's look at rule number two. So on, rule number two deals with numbering that continuous carbon chain, the parent chain here. And it says you want to start on the end closest to the first substituent. Your goal is to get that first substituent the lowest possible number. So if we look at this first one here, I'll do this in blue. Uh, in this case, if I number this left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six, my first substituent, my only substituent, would be at carbon six. But if I number it right to left, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, I'll get my substituent located at carbon two of the parent chain, and that'll be a superior way to number this. If we do the same thing down below here, so again, my parent chain highlighted with red carbons here, if I start from the right, one, two, three, four, five, the first substituent I see would be located at carbon five, but if I go the other direction, I'm gonna get my first substituent located here at carbon two. And so that's the superior of numbering through your main chain. So, and last but not least, and again, we cross this one out as being the wrong way to get the parent chain. So with our correct way up top here, uh, if I number this left to right, I'll come up with a substituent at carbon two here. So if I go right to left, I'll also get a substituent at carbon two, so one, two. So those look equivalent so far, but if I go left to right, one, two, I get a substituent at carbon three. So, and if I go left to right again, I've got two substituents on carbon two. So actually, my second substituent's also on carbon two. So, and that's the key is if there's a tie with the first substituent, you move on to the second substituent to get the second substituent, the lower number. And so we see here that it's actually gonna work better out if we go right to left. So let's get rid of a couple of things there. So, and number this thing right to left. And again, there's our eight carbon chain. Cool, let's take a look at rule number three. So rule number three has us identifying these substituents. So a substituent is anything that's not part of the parent chain. Uh, and in this case, carbon substituents are always gonna end with the suffix YL, and they're still gonna use these same numerical designations we've been using before here. So just with a YL suffix instead of an A and E suffix. So in this case, methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, hexyl, heptyl, octyl, nonyl, decyl, undecyl, dodecyl, so, and so forth. So in this case, uh, if I look at the first example here, this is simply a one carbon substituent. That's gonna be a methyl group. Cool, and we see that we also, if there's multiples, use di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, et cetera, to identify that there's multiples. Uh, and we also are gonna use the chain locator or chain number, so and a hyphen, uh, before each of these substituents, just to say where it's attached to the parent chain. So here it's attached to carbon two. So as part of the name, it's gonna say two dash methyl. We'll find out hyphens separate numbers from letters. So if we go down to the next example here, this is also one carbon substituent. That's a methyl group. So, and it's located at carbon two. So in that one, we're also gonna say two methyl. And then this here is an ethyl group and it's located to the parent chain by carbon three. We're at carbon three, so three dash ethyl, we're part of the name there. And if we go to this one, we've got lots of things going on. So we've got a couple of ethyl groups. So there are two of them located at carbon three and carbon six. So since there's two of them, we don't just say ethyl, we'll say diethyl. So, and we'll give two chain locators, in this case, three comma six dash diethyl. So hyphen still separates a number from a letter, comma is gonna separate the two numbers in this case. So three six diethyl be part of the name. So your other three substituents are all one carbon substituents. So they're all methyl groups here. So here, two of them located at carbon two, one located at seven. Since there's three of them, we'll say trimethyl is part of the name. And if you say trimethyl here, you've gotta give three chain locators, even if you have to repeat the chain locator, since two of them are attached to the same one as, as this is the case here. So here, there's two of them on carbon two and one on carbon seven. So we'll say two comma two comma seven hyphen trimethyl as part of the name here as well. 
Cool, I'll add one more example down here. So we've still got to go through the longest chain and go through the rules here. So in this case, from this branch point, whether left or right, doesn't matter, they're equivalent. We're making our way down the chain. At this branch point, it is longer to go down to the right than it is to go up, so we'll go down here. And from this point, whether I go up and to the right or down, it is equivalent, so I'll just choose one of the two, didn't matter which one. And we can see our longest chain is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons, that's heptane again. Uh, and then we can see all of our substituents. We've got one here, one here, and one here, and in this case, they are all methyl groups, and having three of them, we'll say try in the name. And in this case, if we had to number that longest chain, if I numbered it left to right, uh, I'd have a, let's do this in blue, I'd have uh, my first substituent at carbon two. If I went right to left, one, two, my first substituent would also be at carbon two. So, but left to right, my next substituent would be to three, four, and that would end up being carbon five. Whereas I can see if I go right to left, that would also be my second switch, but it'd be at carbon three. So let's take a few of these out and number it right to left then. We can get the second substituent the lowest possible number since the first substituent there was a numerical tie. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so with our trimethyl here, they're located at two, three, and six. So we'll say two, three, comma, six, dash trimethyl again as part of the name. Let's move on to the next rule. So now we're finally ready to name these things, and we'll do that with rules number four and five here. And we see that we're supposed to list the substituents in alphabetical order. Keep in mind that your numerical prefix, like di, tri, tetra, those aren't part of the alphabet, just like methyl or ethyl or propyl under those. Uh, that's what we mean by alphabetical order, just for the substituent names themselves, not the numerical prefixes. Uh, we'll find a couple exceptions here when we get to complex uh, substituents here in a little bit as well. But for now, this should work. Uh, and in this case, we're going to use the chain number and a hyphen. We've got the ditritetra stuff already listed and things of a sort. So this first one here, first thing you say is the substituent. So it's just 2-methyl, the only substituent I have. So, And then we're going to say the parent chain and end it with the A and E ending like we're supposed to. And for seven carbons, that's heptane. Now this is the same word. There's not a space between. So it's just plain old Heptane, so 2-methylheptane for the first one here. So for the second one here, we've got 3-ethyl and 2-ethyl to say, I'm sorry, 2-methyl to say, uh, but ethyl comes before methyl in the alphabet, so we'll say that first. So in this case, 3-ethyl, hyphen-2, so notice hyphens always separate letters from numbers, so 2-methyl. So, and this is also a 7-carbon chain, so also heptane, again, no space here, straight into the word, we're trying to get that longest word in the world. Uh, so 3-ethyl, 2-methyl, heptane for the second one. Let's take a look at those other two. So for this next one, the only thing we have are methyl groups here. And we already know that 2, 3, 6 dash trimethyl is part of the name. And in this case, the only thing left to say, that's all the substituents, is just the longest chain, which again is a 7-carbon chain. So again, no space and just plain old heptane. So 2, 3, 6 trimethyl heptane. So for the next one here, we've got two different sets of substituents. We've got some methyls and ethyls, and ethyl comes first in the alphabet, so we'll say that first, again, listing the substituents in alphabetical order. So this name's going to start off with 3, 6 dash diethyl. So, and then dash 2, 2, 7 dash trimethyl. Cool, and our longest chain here is 8 carbons, and that's octane, and again, no space before the parent parent chain's name here. So this is 3,6-diethyl-227-trimethyl-octane. Let's look at a couple more examples. All right, in this next example, we want to kind of take a look at a special case of rule number two. So in rule number two here, the special case says if the substituents are all located at the same chain locations, regardless of which way you number it, then we're going to find the alphabet breaks the tie. So if we take a look at our longest chain here first in this example. So from this branch point, we definitely should go left and right rather than up. They're both longer than one carbon there. And when we get to this branch point, whether I go down to the right or straight up, it is exactly equivalent. So I'll just pick one of the two. And so from here, we can see we've got exactly two equivalents here, a methyl group and an ethyl group. So when we go to number this, if we number this left to right, one, two, three. So the first substituent I come across is at carbon three. And if I go right to left, one, two, three. First substituent I come out is also at carbon three. So then I go on to the second substituent, one, two, three, left to right, four. So why don't we put that up top? So four, five. So our second one's at carbon five. 
So, and if we go right to left again, our second one we'd see would also be at carbon five. And so regardless of how we number this here, our substituents are at three and five respectively. So in this case, with both directions yielding exactly the same numbers, and again, the key here is for all the substituents, then the alphabet is gonna break the tie here. So in this case, ethyl comes before methyl in the alphabet, and so we're gonna number it uh, to give it the ethyl group, the priority, the lower number, and that happens when we go right to left, and he ends up at carbon three here. And so we'll just continue on through the chain, and the method in blue here is the preferred way to number this. And so in this case, we go to name this thing, we still name the substituents first. We're still gonna name ethyl before methyl since it comes first in the alphabet, and we list those substituents alphabetically. So in this case, we're gonna say three ethyl. So, and then five methyl. And then our longest chain here, seven carbons, that is heptane. So three ethyl, five methyl, heptane.